Harold Braun joins us now on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. He is the CEO and executive chairman at Guidant. We're very grateful for a few minutes of your time. Thanks for being here. Good to have you. Thank you very much for having me. Of course. So this is an interview all about your company, the a really exciting space of yeah. autonomous vehicles. Let's start first with a bit of an introduction for our viewers a bit unfamiliar. What is Guidant and, and your overall mission in the autonomous space? Very good. Yeah, happy to do that. So uh, Guidant is a software company and uh, our mission is to make autonomous vehicles safer. While we are um, having that mission, we embarked on a way to uh, develop software that uh, integrates with the software of the autonomous manufacturers of vehicles, right? And we add a layer which we call remote monitor and control software. So we have a center where we actually can uh, observe autonomous vehicle fleets and in case they get into in any sorts of trouble right we can actually interact with them and can take over control override the autonomous software and take control of those vehicles in principle we can drive them remotely right so we call that human in the loop concept so when we see of course a lot of autonomous vehicles get into some sort of trouble we call that edge cases and once we have an alarm in our control center we call it as i said remote monitor and control center we get an alarm the remote control operator gets into this vehicle checks it out and then in case it needs help it can actually, this person can actually take over the control wow. and get it out of harm's way or whatever is needed to continue business operations. That's really exciting. Uh, exciting technology and an exciting use of it at a really important time. What did you and the team feel was missing in the market that needed to be addressed with the formation of something like Guidance? Well, when we, when we looked in, uh, into this in the early stages, um, people thought and still think that autonomous vehicles are not safe. So there was this uneasiness mm -hmm. in your mind to get into an autonomous vehicle. That has changed a little bit. And for that, we said we have to have some kind of human in the loop. There is no driver in the vehicle. There's nobody there, there's no steering wheel, mm -hmm. there are no pedals, we, there's our purpose-built vehicles. And then people starting to, wow, what is this? This is futuristic, I don't mm -hmm. know what, what is this, right? To get them in there and give them some kind of easiness. That was our mission and then we said we have in that vehicle also um, a personal communication module where we can interact, actually a human being is on a video screen mm -hmm. in the vehicle, can interact with the passengers and the passengers can interact with that human. Not in the vehicle, at a remote monitor and control center. Yeah. That of course uh, gives that um, spirit of there's a human. As a human in the loop, it's not in the vehicle, right. it's somewhere else. I, I wonder what the ratio looks like. If you have the human in the control center, how many active autonomous vehicles can that one representative sort of oversee and have that relationship with it at any given time? For Very riders? good question. Very good question. This is actually a kind of an unresolved question because mm. uh, we, we started with a one to five ratio, yep. meaning one remote control operator to five vehicles. Well, there is um, research on that. It can be 10, 15, 20. I say all the time, the better our software is, the higher are the number of wow. vehicles we can monitor. Of course, when we control that, it's only one-on-one -on -one relationship, of course, right? Mm -hmm. So um, at the moment, we have one customer wanted to have a one-to-three uh, relationship. We normally start with one-to-five. Mm -hmm. When we know the... Uh, the design uh, domain where the vehicle is operating and we get more comfortable, we are going to increase it, wow. right, to 5, 7, 10, 20, 50. So, um, um, we are going to, of course, the business case works much better the higher the number of is course. of vehicles we, con we uh, monitor and control. Yeah. But starting with 1 to 5 right now. But as you said earlier, there's also a component about this of encouraging people that the underlying technology is safe, right? It, it yeah. is a perception shift. The first time I rode in a Waymo in San Francisco yeah. a year and a half ago, my poor mother in New Jersey thought I was out of my mind. She said, there's no way yeah. Yeah. you're getting in one of those cars with nothing driving you. Yeah. And she, like many others, come from a, a 
you know, her history tells her, well, I might be a bit skeptical. How do you and how do the underlying technology continue to encourage people that the technology is safe on the rules of the road that we're used to operate in with human drivers? So first of all is the experience. I mean, we have vehicles, such vehicles, which I mentioned before, purpose-built vehicles. We have actually at the moment operating in West Palm Beach at a one mile circle. Very soon, we have a 2.6 mile circle in Boca Raton. We have something in the Michigan State University where the bus is a bigger footprint. So we getting there and people, first of all, have a kind of opposition is what is it? What do I get myself into it? First of all, when you have a human in the loop telling you, hello, come in, mm -hmm. right? That of course is an easiness. Mm -hmm. And I have seen people and hearing about the feedback, we have only received positive feedback. On hundreds and hundreds of rides, actually almost thousands of those now, we have received comments like, air condition is too. <laughs> no, I yeah, know this kind of things, sure. right? But not that they felt uncomfortable, right? So once you drive it, people are all the time changing their mind. The experience makes it. So for us, in the industry is to educate, mm -hmm. to make sure that we allow people to experience it, they come out of the vehicles, change their mind. That's great. And therefore, the Ramos and the Zooks and all the other um, uh, companies who go into that space, which could be all of our customers, mm -hmm. uh, they help the industry a lot. That's great. While I have you, what most excites you about where the technology is today and where you hope it'll be tomorrow? Uh, the most exciting thing is that we have the sensoric uh, in vehicles like the LiDAR systems, the radar systems, the sensoric, the cameras. The cameras get better and better, right? All these uh, functions together and the uh, artificial intelligence component of this. Having information about where the vehicles are operating, getting all this information into our AI platform gives us a very good sense of what is happening around. Data is the key. To analyze the data and do the video learning language model, right, and have other AI components in our software learning and makes it actually better every single ride. That excites me the most. Data is the key to success here. But we have to start somewhere, so we have to bring it to the streets and we have to bring it to people that can experience autonomous vehicles operating. Harold Braun, congratulations to you and the team at Guidant. Really grateful for your time Thank here. Thank you very much. CEO and Executive Chairman at Guidant, Harold Braun, thanks a lot for being here. Congratulations. Thank you for having